Buongiorno, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to introduce you to one of the greatest artists of all time. And it's not just because there is a ninja turtle named after him. His name is Michelangelo Buonarroti. He lived over 500 years ago in Italy, and he is best known as a famous painter, sculptor, and architect. So andiamo artists, here we go. Okay artists, go ahead and stand up with me. Let's pretend that we are climbing a very tall, steep ladder. Are you feeling a bit dizzy? as we reach the top, because we are more than 60 feet in the air. That's as high as a three-story building. Whew, okay, we finally reached the top. Now, we carefully step onto a small, flat platform. Everybody step onto the platform. We can stop a moment now and catch our breath and rest after such a long climb. Now, let's tilt our heads back as far as they will go and go ahead and look up at the ceiling. Oh. Go ahead now and bend and arch your back so your head goes back even farther. Now, raise your arm above your head like you're going to paint the ceiling. You're painting the ceiling. Reach up there. Now, everybody, freeze. Michelangelo spent all his working hours in this position, just like this, for four long years. He even drew a little picture of himself doing just what you're doing now. You haven't held this position for even four minutes, but I bet you are quite uncomfortable. You may go ahead and relax and sit down now. This is the huge ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome, Italy. I'm wondering, how do you paint such a giant, tall ceiling? Well, before Michelangelo climbed the ladder to begin his work, he planned and prepared for six months. Michelangelo was not painting on a canvas. It was a ceiling. So a special technique called fresco painting had to be learned and it was very tricky. His assistants would apply fresh plaster to a section of the ceiling where Michelangelo would paint for the day. He would paint right on the wet plaster, so it became a part of the ceiling itself. It was tricky because it could not be touched up or added to after it dried. In a single day, Michelangelo had to completely finish all the work planned, or it dried and was spoiled, and he had to plaster over it and start again. Before Michelangelo climbed the ladder to begin work, he planned and prepared for six months. The ceiling has over 300 painted figures of people in scenes from the Bible. Let's look at a close-up figure from the Sistine Chapel named Jeremiah. This is a painting of Jeremiah. Based on how he is sitting, Jeremiah looks sad and tired. It is believed that Michelangelo used himself as a model for Jeremiah. 
I am thinking this might also show how tired and overwhelmed Michelangelo was from painting the ceiling. Notice how Jeremiah is a big man. Notice his size and strength. Now, let's find some realistic details and point them out in this close-up of Jeremiah. I notice that his hands have veins right here and right here. I notice that his face has wrinkles and creases in it. I notice that there are light shadow, light and dark shadows, light and dark, light and dark. The brightest part is this yellow sleeve. Now follow that highlight upwards along his hand, which leads our eyes to his face. There we catch the full extent of his despair. Lost in bitterness, his head sunk on his hand as he gazes downward. Remember, Jeremiah was just one of over 300 figures Michelangelo painted with such detail, realism, and bright colors. Finally, with great relief, Michelangelo declared that the Sistine Chapel was ready to be shown to the world. At the unveiling, people came running from all corners of the earth. This great work stopped them in amazement. It left them wondering and lost for words. Let's look at the most famous section of the chapel ceiling. I'm wondering if you've ever seen this famous scene before. Go ahead and try this with me. Can you take your two hands and reach them out in this same graceful, powerful and dramatic way. Go ahead and see if your two hands can come closer together until they almost meet. Great job. You can put your hands down now. But what was Michelangelo, the artist, left with after painting the Sistine Chapel? Well, he ruined his eyesight to the extent that he could not read letters or look at drawings unless they were held high above his eyes. And this lasted for several months. Michelangelo was also left exhausted by this giant work. However, over 500 years later, large crowds of people still come from all over the world to admire his masterpiece. And they spend a lot of time looking up. But even with his skill and accomplishment, Michelangelo preferred another kind of art over painting. Let me show you his first love as an artist. First and foremost, Michelangelo considered himself a sculptor. Time and time again, he spoke of his dislike for painting. What he loved most was taking his simple tools such as a chisel and a hammer, and turning cold, hard marble stone into a lifelike figure. Coming up next, we will look at what he sculpted from this giant block of marble. Not only was the block huge, but the amount of work, time, and danger involved in getting it out of a mountain and transporting it to the city was immense. But that name, giant, took on another meaning very soon. There is a story in the Bible about a young man named David who goes to battle with an enemy soldier named Goliath. Goliath was renowned for being a huge giant. 
But guess who won the battle between David and Goliath? You got it if you were thinking David. So Michelangelo took the giant block of superb marble and sculpted it into David the hero. It is very large and nearly takes your breath away as you gaze in wonder at the artist's creation. It stands 17 feet tall. That's more than three times as tall as your teacher. Michelangelo shows David about to go to battle with Goliath. His face shows intense concentration as he holds his only weapon over his shoulder, a slingshot. He watches alertly with the loaded slingshot held lightly as he gazes into the distance, waiting for Goliath to come within range. Notice the beautiful, realistic details of his curly hair, the lines of his face, neck, and thumb. The model for the sculpture was a teenage boy in Florence. The city of Florence hired Michelangelo and built a shed around the giant marble block so Michelangelo could work in privacy for three years. He created this next sculpture when he was only 23 years old. Pieta is the Italian word for pity. The face of Mary, the mother of Jesus, shows her eyes downcast, almost shut, as she tries to accept the death of her son she is holding. It was carved from a huge block of marble, but it almost gives us the impression of softness. We can see places where it looks soft, right here in the folds of her dress and her scarf. It looks extremely realistic. Let's take a close look at just her face. When it was unveiled, people from all over Europe flocked to Rome. It was unanimously praised and admired. But the artist overheard a man informing an admiring crowd one day that the Pieta was the work of a certain artist from Milan, not Michelangelo who came from Florence. The following night, Michelangelo took his tools and in beautiful Roman letters, he carved his name on the sculpture. I'm wondering, can you find his signature? Go ahead and raise your hand if you spot it and your teacher will call on you. Yes, we can see the signature right here on the band that runs diagonally across Mary's chest. Never again would anyone mistake his work for someone else's. He carved these words, Michelangelo Buonarroti from Florence made this. We've witnessed Michelangelo's incredible skill as a painter of the Sistine Chapel as an unsurpassed sculptor in the Pieta and David. But his talents didn't end there. What else could he be famous for? Let's take a look. You will be surprised. Michelangelo is also famous as an architect. An architect is someone who designs buildings. Michelangelo was 70 years old when Pope Paul appointed him chief architect of St. Peter's Church in Rome. Michelangelo worked on St. Peter's for the rest of his life. It was a huge undertaking 
And finally, at age 82, the artist realized he would not live to see it completed. So he built a model of the Great Dome, which is still the tallest in the world, which he took particular interest in designing. It was still under construction when he died at age 89, but the builders had his model to direct them. St. Peter's Church was the crowning achievement of his remarkable life. He refused to accept any payment for his 17 years of work on the church. Even at age 89, he visited the construction site every day to check on the progress. Let's step inside this famous church. I wonder if it will be plain or richly decorated. Let's see. St. Peter's is beautiful with its rich design and decoration. Tourists stand in long lines every day to visit this beautiful church. Michelangelo's dome is located right over the main altar. Let's look at the interior of the dome. Be prepared to tilt your head way back to look up. This dome or Duomo is huge and beautiful and very, very tall. Notice how he included many windows to shed light on the decorations and the large altar that sits directly beneath the Great Dome. You might be wondering what the world was like in Michelangelo's lifetime. Well, between the years 1300 and 1600, life in Europe was exciting. It was a new age of thinking, learning, and art. It is called the Renaissance, which means rebirth, a new beginning. Explorers set out to explore the new world. Scientists were making new discoveries, and Michelangelo astonished the world with his unsurpassed artistic talents. Michelangelo, the painter, sculptor, architect, is a great master artist. It is important that we acknowledge and remember his remarkable talents and his use of so many realistic details. Okay, artists, we're gonna play a little game to see if we remember Michelangelo's great talents. I will go ahead and point to a picture and you will tell me silently using only your hands if you think it is Michelangelo the painter you're going to show me your paintbrush. If you think the picture is showing Michelangelo the sculptor you're going to show me your hammer and your chisel. If you think it is Michelangelo, the architect, you're gonna show me designing with paper and pencil. All right, here we go, artists. What do you think about this first picture? Right here on the left. Is it Michelangelo, the painter? Michelangelo the sculptor or Michelangelo the architect. Okay, if you said it's Michelangelo the sculptor, you got it. Great job. Okay, let's look at the next picture, the one in the middle of the dome. Do you think that shows Michelangelo the painter, the sculptor, or the architect? Show me with only your hands. Yes, it is Michelangelo the architect designing with paper and pencil. St. Peter's. Okay, last picture. 
Show me with your hands. Do you think it's Michelangelo, the painter? Is it Michelangelo, the sculptor? Or is it Michelangelo, the architect? You got it. It is Michelangelo, the painter, as he painted the Sistine Chapel. Great job, artists. You have done a great job today, Paradise Panther artists. But I'm wondering, which type of art will you be doing in your art activity next? Will it be Michelangelo the painter, the sculptor, or the architect? You will just have to wait and see. I will see you next time, Paradise Panther artists. Arrivederci.